get up, stretch my legs. Eat some breakfast, milk and eggs. Brush my teeth up, wash my face. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Start my day. Wake up, get up, get up, stretch my legs. Eat some breakfast. My circle of friends has shrunk for a long time like because I realized that I needed different levels of friends in my life and that I had different levels of friends in my life. So I thought I had narrowed down to the small circle. These are my solid folks that I'm taking till death. In 2020, I learned my self-worth, right? I learned boundaries. I learned more about me. And my counselor warned me that the people closest to me were gonna have the hardest time with the new me. And I just realized that child, so we had to change some friendships around here. <laughs> that what I was supposed to do on my About Me page on my website was talk about me. But as I learned about business, I realized I was supposed to talk about how I can help you. <laughs> Times are changing now. The things that we used to thought we had to do in our 20s, we can damn sure do in our 30s. So I graduated high school when I was 17. Started my freshman year of college at 18. Found out I was pregnant at 19 and had my very first child when I was 20 years old. And life changed drastically for me. So I always thought that the 20s was the time, like I was gonna have fun, life was gonna be a blast. No, I was being a full-time college student and a mother majority of that time. A mother that entire time, college student majority of that time. My 30s was the time that I just hit the road running. My daughter got older, my career got better, I made more money than when I was younger. I just remember when I got pregnant, I can't even say I was so embarrassed, but I was so determined to just make sure that I beat the odds and that I did not end up as a statistic. And that was just my biggest goal. I had this older lady at my church who said to me, I, I guess she could see my shame. I guess she could see that I was a bit embarrassed or disappointed in myself. And she said, baby, it's okay. Because when your baby gets old enough, you still be young enough to enjoy life. And I can't agree more. So I guess my 30s became my 20s because I took life just, I mean, I just held on to life and can't went going. Like it was just like, okay, fun times, good times, accomplishments. If you guys want to hear about some of the amazing things, not only I did, but I'm sure you have done, can do, will do, or just use this as your motivation, then please keep watching. So these things are in no particular order. I just try to jot them down as I like thought of them. When I was 34 years old, I bought my very first home all by myself. And I tell you no lie, that was something I thought I could not do. I must admit, I had the best realtor in town. I had the best lender in town. And I couldn't be more blessed to get with the amazing team that motivated me throughout the way and like pushed me because there were times I actually wanted to give up during the house buying process. I grew my career during my 30s. Yeah, I started my career pretty late in my 20s. If I'm at 11 years now and I'm 40, yeah, I started my career, my HR career when I was 28, 29 years old. Super duper late, in my opinion. I just grew my career during my 30s. And then I started a business. And so I started growing revenue. And that was amazing. I started killing debt. I started, I did tons of side hustles. It was just like grind mode because I knew where I wanted to be. And my biggest goal overall was that when I turned 40, I wanted to be able to be making six figures and I wanted to be HR director. Sis passed both of them goals. But <laughs> um, some of the things I did that I wasn't really expecting to do. Now my realtor did remind me that I would have to do some of these things because the house was older. So I bought a pre-owned house. Like I didn't buy like a, a brand new build. And so there were some things that he was like, okay, at this at this particular point, you're gonna have to start worrying about these things. So some of the bigger things I haven't gotten there yet. Like it's like replacing the AC, replacing the roof. But some of the other things I did. So I had to replace several different appliances, which was so annoying because the only appliance that I'd ever bought in my life was literally my washer and dryer. And back then, like paying $500 for them both was a big deal. <laughs> so I had no idea that appliances were costing seven, eight, dollars $2,500. I had to buy a new refrigerator. My old refrigerator just gave out. It just started giving me the hardest time, child. I mean, my food felt like room temperature and the freezer was frozen shut. And that was right when I had realized that my microwave was broken because <laughs> at first I thought, but food just took that long to heat up. And then I went to Miami for a, probably like my first vacation, I guess my first real vacation. And 
and my friends microwave worked so quick I was like hold up I need to look at mine things that would normally take me like 30 seconds or maybe like two minutes to heat up was starting to take me five seven nine minutes <laughs> so I was like okay let me get a new microwave before this thing just you know give out on your girl and then naturally I had to get a washer and dryer because I had bought my first washer and dryer when my daughter was five or six years old so my daughter's 19 now those things were done. First, the dryer gave out. So I was like, okay, the washer about to give out too. So <laughs> I ended up getting a new one. I already hit on it just a little bit, but I became an entrepreneur. I had no idea that I was ever going to be an entrepreneur. Didn't even want to be an entrepreneur. Like I say this over and over again, and I mean it with everything in me, like doing HR and all things that relates to it is totally the Lord. This is not my passion. I never, ever wanted to be the person in charge. I never wanted to be responsible for generating revenue. I never wanted to be responsible for other people. I was like, child, I'm good. I can keep working for other people and let them have all of that stress. So I created HR during my 30s and thought it was just going to be a YouTube channel. Thought I was just putting it out there for some people I knew so that they can have some HR information I felt they should need. And the channel just grew. And now we're at almost 10,000 subscribers. We have services. We have a website. We have digital products. We have a blog. Like, Ah, oh, and, and I mean, HR is still very, very, very new. Like I made an official business almost two years ago. So super duper new, did that late in my thirties. And I got into a really bad car accident before I was supposed to close on my house. So it obviously delayed closing. And I totaled that car. Absolutely love that car. It was paid for. I didn't have a car payment in like eight years. Like I didn't have a car payment in a long time. And so I really thought that it was going to be sweet to move into this house and I have a car payment. Nope, I totally lost the car. So I finally just pulled the plug and was like, F it, I'm gonna buy my dream cars. Always wanted a Lexus. Didn't know which one I wanted, but I settled on the GS 300, 350, and I love that car. I totally love that car. Then my daughter totally lost that one. <laughs> and so, that put me into having to buy another car. You know, life is life in and my daughter was fine. She was okay. I hope that it was a learning lesson for her. And my dad used to always say he's never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. So I was like, child, it's physical things. We just got to let it go. It does frustrate me because I don't feel like she really understood the headache I got into behind that. But at the end of the day, she was good. Y'all, 2020 was the best thing that happened to you, girl. It forced me to like invest in me, invest in my mental care and invest into my boundaries and make some changes and devote time with my counselor. And so I just, I just learned my self-worth. I didn't realize how much I devalued myself or didn't think as high of myself until I literally sat down and like did aggressive, aggressive counseling during 2020. It just truly increased my value. It created boundaries. It gave me more peace. Oh, peace, peace. Oh, ain't nobody can put a price tag on my peace. Nobody can ever. I, I won't trade my peace for anything. I won't. Of all things I've done in my 30s, the best thing I could have did was just figure out what made me at peace. What do I enjoy? What do I like? Oh. I am just thankful for that alone. I started a self um, care regimen. Um, you guys may have seen this already, I'm not sure, but I definitely did skincare treatment through Epicenter. That was awesome. My biggest problem was that I just didn't like like how around my eyes were getting darker and didn't realize how much I neglected my entire face. Um, and before I went with Epicenter, I went with German Aesthetics, but they're in DC. So that was a little bit tricky. And then I found out about the Epicenter here in Charleston. And so it was just nice. You you know, take that time and to learn how to take care of my skin so that, you know, sis can turn 40 and not look 40. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so I started doing a hair regimen, so I am very happy that Ayurveda products works well in my hair and that it's just amazing and like it's so natural and that it was created because Ayurveda is still very, very new, but it has been a miracle in my hair, especially because like one night I just got so frustrated with my hair. I stretch perm so long that it looks like it's transitioning. Then I'll go get a perm. And I've been doing that for a while, but I didn't realize I wasn't doing everything else that I should have been doing with that and I shouldn't be stretching as long. And so I normally wash my hair in like sections. This particular time I wash my hair all one clump because I was just exhausted with washing my hair just exhausted with the day and totally damaged my hair I really was like okay now I gotta focus 
and I really came up with a complete hair regimen and doing scalp massages and making sure that I'm not only greasing my scalp, but I'm all in my hair. I'm moisturizing, I'm sealing, I'm washing on a regular, I'm deep conditioning, all worked out. I probably should leave this for when I was in my last year in my 30s, or I'll just say this was definitely in my last year in my 30s that I started seeing a chiropractor. When I first started my HR career, I had a payroll lady that I adored. My very first HR job ever. I just love Miss Von Seal. And Miss Von Seal was so healthy. She ate healthy. She was just the healthiest thing ever. And she used to always go to the chiropractor and I would always be like, well, why are you going? And she said, just to make sure I'm taking care of my spinal cord and that I'm, I'm okay because I'm sitting at this desk all day and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, you know what? I think that's what healthy people do. <laughs> so I always thought, okay, at one point in my life, I want to start going to the chiropractor. And so I started going to the chiropractor and it's just been a dream. Like I could not believe that in my first week that I went, um, definitely my first like two or three weeks, I did not know all that chiropractic care can like resolve. I had no idea. I had TMG. My chiropractor took care of that. And mind y'all now, I went in this man's office talking about I'm healthy, I'm good to go. He educated me on what to do and how to take care of myself and like how bad my spinal cord was and how I can get it corrected over time and what type of treatment I needed. And so I ended up one day just going and talking to him about like how my TMJ wasn't as bad as it was. <laughs> He was like, you got TMJ? Child, he got rid of that thing. I don't even have to wear my night guard anymore, so that's really nice. And then he also helped me with my carpal tunnel syndrome. And in my 30s, I decided I would go ahead and get foot surgery. So I have always had bunions, and I used to always, and still do always like them, because I always thought they remind me of my father's feet. My father had horrible feet, y'all, horrible feet. And my father passed when I was nine from prostate cancer. So I was like, you know what? This is like my treat from daddy. And so it's cool. <laughs> And so I started like running often during my 30s because I wanted something to help me like disconnect from work and to still stay healthy. And I always wanted to do running. So I joined a running group, started running, did my first 5K, then did another 5K and like loved it. As I'm like constantly trying to stay with running on a regular basis, I started having problems where pain was shooting from my feet on up my legs and the higher it got, the more I started to worry. And so I went to the doctor and he was like, you got to get rid of these bunions. So I got rid of one I do not want to go back to the same doctor for the other one but during that time is when I researched how to start a YouTube channel so it really kind of worked out because I was stuck in bed <laughs> so for like three or four months I haven't been running as often since then but when I do it hasn't been giving me any problem another thing was that my three-year-old niece she passed from indigestion and we've always had that issue in our family so I didn't think it was that big of a deal but when she passed I realized I needed to pay attention to my issues that I was having with indigestion because mine was getting worse and so I was like okay so I went ahead and got that hernia repaired and so I had surgery with that too you know it's crazy because during my 30s I realized that my circle of friends just shrunk over time my circle of friends has shrunk for a long time like because I realized that I needed different levels of friends in my life and that I had different levels of friends in my life and so I thought I had narrowed down to the small circle and I thought that these are my solid folks that I'm taking till death but it was so crazy because in 2020, I learned my self-worth, right? I learned boundaries. I learned more about me. My counselor warned me that the people closest to me were going to have the hardest time with the new me. And I just realized that, child. So we had to change some friendships around here. <laughs> there are people that I miss, but if it means sacrificing me, then I'm okay not having people around. I'm okay with it. Because I realized that I was, I was allowing people to treat me worse than I was are making me feel worse than I was, and I was putting them on a pedestal. So, you know, it caused me less distractions, child. I feel so much better. I can focus. Life has just been good. Like, life has been good. If you guys have not seen me on IG, then you probably won't follow me on IG because I stay in them stories either laughing about something or telling you about how good life is, showing you how good life is. In my 30s, I actually started taking like real vacations. You know, all before I went on several different trips, on several different trips for work. So I went to Vegas a couple times for work. I went to San Diego, obviously Myrtle Beach several times, Atlanta several times. All of that was for work. Sometimes I might stay an extra day or go and hang out with some friends while I'm wherever I am. But I had never went on a vacation, just a vacation, just to do a vacation and like not take anything work with me until last year. And I went to Miami and that was the best thing ever. So. 
Went to Miami last year, Miami, Florida. Then I went to Palm Springs, California. Then I went to Atlanta for fun. <laughs> and then this year I went to Cabo, Mexico to celebrate my 40th birthday. And now I'm preparing to go back to Palm Springs, California. And like, I just can't be happier. These vacations really helped me reset. Like really, I probably don't need three of them a year, but <laughs> I got to head up at least one or two per year from here on out. So I thought that what I was supposed to do on my about me page on my website was talk about me. But as I learned about business, I realized I was supposed to talk about how I can help you, <laughs> but you can still see me dabbling in there, some personal stuff. So you can definitely see how much I've been transparent about my life. I'll put the link down to that below so you guys can see some of these amazing people that I talk about from time to time. I just, you know, I want y'all to know that times are changing now. And the things that we used to thought we had to do in our twenties, we can damn sure do in our thirties. So that's just my thirties, right? A lot going on. Get ready y'all. I have my next video that's gonna tell you guys about my last year and my 30s. All the things I did while I was 39, some good, some not so good. So can't wait to see y'all on the next video.